And off we go, it's race day again. Today we are in Miniota. This might have been the hottest day I've ever rolled on my cross bike. I actually bailed out and just gave up on this race. Yeah, I could have finished it, but I just felt like it would have ruined my entire weekend dehydration, heat exertion, but whatever. It was a fun one for the lap I did. Maybe two laps, I don't even remember. Adam is ahead of us, there he is, our regular rider. He is flying, that was a great start, really fun. Everyone comes around two kind of hairpin turns and then straight into the trails. These trails are super fast and flowy, just wide enough that you can go fast, but tight enough that it is fast at the same time and dangerous, you know. Whoop, that was a left turn there. He almost went down, I almost went down. It's hard in this dust when you get tight close to someone. It is just so dry and dusty out, it is near impossible to know what's going on. Bit of a town touch there. What's cool, I like you know, the multiple routes you can take it. It doesn't necessarily mean one's faster than the other, it's just whatever flows better for you. It's always fun to kind of make your own route and think you're going to be faster than the next guy. These field sections though, like look at them. I don't even know where the trail is at this point. Pre-rode this one last year, but not this year. It is a very similar route, but the memory is not there to help me. I cannot figure out where we're going when someone's ahead of me like that. Looks like that guy got ahead of Adam. As you can tell, I have a bit of a sore throat, but that's okay. We're still uh, making videos. All these videos are from this past summer, and I'm just trying to get through my back catalog of videos. People seem to be watching them, so I appreciate you watching. It's a fun thing to look back at. We fly through here. I mean, this, it doesn't look it, but the back end is getting kicked around. There's a lot of rocks in this field, so you're going fast, and then all of a sudden you hit like a rock, which you didn't even see. It just throws you around. kind of throws you off a little bit from holding back just a tad. These field sections, you start, you're like, okay, okay, we can get going. Just dry, dusty, weird like ruts and uh, rocks all over the place. You know, I really do enjoy this KX250. It works really well, but it is time. It is time. I'm watching the Dakar, like I said last video. Those guys are flying, and I don't know if it makes much difference switching bikes, but with mountain bikes, it's free speed. You can change bikes just slightly, and you get free speed. I've never ran out of fuel, but this is... The Whoa! Okay. Hard to... You just don't even see it. You don't even see them. Like, I forgot it was even there in the video. Now we've lost the position. This guy here is on a 250X ahead of me. The older models before it was the 250RX. He still flies on it, like essentially it's the same bike I've got now, but in the X model, so a smaller rear wheel. I think is the only difference, really. And he does it, he rides well. You see him pretty much every race. And smoke screen. I cannot see. Fast and flowing. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Yeah, new bike, new bike, new bike would be nice. Different bike. I don't need brand new. Love brand new, but I don't need it. But um, a different bike, more suited for this. Do a bit of adventure stuff would be nice. And I feel pretty good. We're going pretty fast for not riding this since last year. You kind of have that back of your head. Like, I remember this. I remember this. And it is a fast course. We actually end up coming down by the river and... Oh, through another open field. And it's super fast through there. Like, we're talking fifth gear wide open. But with the dust, it is super sketchy, and there's a merge where the slower guys come through. It got pretty chaotic towards the end. For a race like this, I do have my suspension set for motocross, so it's pretty firm. And sometimes I wish it was just a tad softer, but it's just easier. All the racetracks are a little bit different. And without pre-running them, I don't know exactly where to go. 
for my suspension settings, having it motocrossy, having it twitchy is really nice. If I go into a bit more specific motocross or enduro bike, you know, the actual off-road guys, you'd just be set on the perfect scenario. This is stuff Honda, Kawasaki, they've all tested, pros have gone on it, and they've said, you know what, it needs to be hit. And whether it's a different suspension or not, I have no idea. But those guys know so much better. Is this course is good. This is a fast little course. But it is hot. Like, we are talking like 40 degrees probably eh, with the humidity at least. It was one of the hottest days. And we're on the top of a hill, like, just glaring plateau. And then when you actually go down the valley, it does not cool off. It's like sunken heat down there. And what this race took place at like 10 30 11 a.m. in the morning there's an afternoon race as well I don't even know how those guys survive I mean with better preparation you can survive through anything right but I wasn't prepared I took some water with me should have pre-soaked my t-shirt or something you can tell someone's on my back right now so you gotta push 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 See, that's one of those multiple routes. It's like pretty straight line, but I had to go a little slow. Probably could have turned a wider line and gone a little bit faster. It's hard to know. It's hard to know. Then we're back out. It's like, okay, let's go, go, go. But now this is a super rocky field. Not super, but there is a lot of unknown rocks. And when you're chasing someone with the dust, it just gives you a lot less forward-looking ability. Bike position makes a huge deal, like through that kind of stuff, you're trying to lean back, get that front wheel a little loose so it bounces off things, and then when you come into these trails, you're popping right up close, kind of right before the tank to get a lot of weight on the front wheel, so now your left and right have a lot of power, a lot of traction in that front wheel, so there's a lot of body movement in this kind of riding, especially this track where you're bouncing from wide open flat out to... Okay, now we're turning really fast. In a situation like that, I should have pushed way further forward on my tank. Got that power into a front wheel and let that back end slide around. Instead, I was still in that position back and I had to slow down way more for the corner. You can see we're kind of going, we're catching, we're catching. I think that's Adam right up ahead of us. And he's just in that kind of Goldilocks zone of he's far enough ahead that I know now where the next corner is. Okay, now we're dropping down. But, it's not too dusty for me. It was a relief to get out of that field and do this downhill stuff. The downhill stuff, because of mountain biking, I feel like I go pretty fast. I try and accelerate down. Many guys don't. I try and push as hard as I can on the downs. Because you can get a lot of free speed that a lot of guys are breaking on the way down. You can see I'm catching up, I'm catching up. That's a pretty fun drop. You start rolling, there's a little drop, keep rolling. Yeah, we're catching him. We got him, we got him. You gotta be patient, get that body forward. I can tell I'm slacking. There we go. Okay, now we're back up on top of it. You can tell even from the video how much of the handlebars are showing as how much I'm slacking off on the front end control. And in these trails like you are bouncing back and forth you are throwing your body around you can see way too far back right there way too far back i can see the handlebars in the camera way too far i should have bumped forward for that little s turn i would have got through it a lot quicker wide open field hard left it's always fun you want to go faster and faster and faster but then you just got to break for longer and longer so we went all the way down the bottom of the valley along the bottom and now we're climbing right back up this video almost looks like it's in fast forward. Like we are nipping along, kid. Putting the pressure on him. I know you can hear me. We can do it. We can do it. Watch his mistakes. Hit in the rocks. Yeah, we got him. You got it. Now the power's on. We're gonna get some space between us. Gap him. Make sure Adam knows I am the better one. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a pretty tight race. He's on the 300 two stroke. That thing pulls, but in this heat, it was super hard, and he finished the race, I didn't, so, you know, I bailed out, I was like, oh, I could do one more lap, but 
It's just gonna be a painful hot lap and the rest of the day you're just gonna be exhausted. When it's uh for not the championship ring, I don't really care for the most part. I had a blast, I rode, I enjoyed it. But sometimes it's just it's not worth it. I was not prepared for the heat that was today. This section up here is interesting. It's super fast, yet somehow super choppy. I'm not really sure why a lot of these sections right here kind of thing. Uh, people are obviously braking really aggressively. And it really puts a choppiness to the ground. And it's very tiring to hold on to the bike. Especially again, this one, my suspension settings are probably way too high. On the motocross track, I can jump, I can land super nice. If anything, I could click it up one more click. But I should really drop it two clicks, switch out the springs. It all seems like a lot of work when I just want a new bike, you know. Here we go. We're flowing now. This is a hard video to cut. I'm not sure where to cut. It's just flowy. Yeah. You see how much speed I try and keep? And this is without knowing exactly where the corners are. I feel like a lot of people don't really throttle the accelerator down. They just idle down. And I always try and accelerate as much as I can. That being said, it killed me and I was like, ah, I'm done. I'm not doing another lap. Okay, yep, yeah. fast forward a little bit, it's pretty much that for like 10 minutes straight. Then we whip out to the field and this is where it gets fast, fast, fast. There's a river and you hope that like a cool breeze or anything was coming off it, but it was really just relentless heat. You can see the sky, there is not a cloud in sight. The humidity was high, it was not a pleasant race temperature wise. By now, we're starting to fade, everyone's getting tired. You go through a bit of wooded area, hopping over logs. Slows down the pace a little bit. I don't know why. It's like a little wet, damp down here. The logs really slow you down. Which they really shouldn't. I'm not really sure why they did so much. There's a lot of time there's a log and then a left. So if you hit it too fast, you kind of shoot way into the corner. And then you have to hammer the left and it just doesn't work. You've really got to kind of find the right pace to it. And I think that's the tricky part towards it. Same with head coming out super fast and all of a sudden break, 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 and then you back in. You wish that won't have gave you some relief. So this part's always kind of sketchy. So that's like the slower group, and he just didn't really cut me off. I don't even know if he was that. But then we're going like, you know, fourth gear here. So we're going like six, and he waves me on. I'm like, okay, I'll go off track to the bumpiest section possible never ridden field you just go in and do it just to overtake it was kind of a funny i was like i don't think i should be overtaking you here i was too tired too hot to like hold my bike up going 80 kilometers an hour in an overtake but at least he let me buy he is in the sportsman loop so it is a little shorter so he does a bit more energy than i do so it was nice that he actually let me buy even though he probably could have held up pretty well this next section here is really fun. You do one last field section, get so much speed, like you hold back a little bit because otherwise you'd be doing like 120 through a field, which you've never ridden before. Second lap you might do a little faster, but the first time I'm going through it, I'm like, I don't remember if there's a rock here, a log, where the left turn is, where the ruts are. Then you come out, you turn, and you go straight back into some wooded area through a really fun kind of entrance. So it kind of gets from dry to mud, and then boom, back in the trees, climbing, climbing, climbing. But it was pretty much flat the entire time down there. And this, you just climb straight back up the hill. They painted the rocks there, I don't know if you saw it, because there's a lot of, I don't know, there's a lot of random rocks in here just half sticking out, just ready to throw your wheel left or right if you don't see it properly. back into a fast section it gets really flowy 
nice easy riding nothing too technical on the second half so I kind of count the first half as before that flat river section and the second half after it it starts getting a little easier a little more flowy come through this little gravel pit here it gets a little confusing last year we went straight and they uh, added this big loop on so it was a little weird coming over that blindly and then you're like oh we actually turn left here and then this was the difficult loop and the easy loop I'm not even sure which way it went it just skipped that one little up get out of it almost jump the wrong direction so you have no idea where you're going back into it and again this whole last half of the lap much easier much more flow to it much more relaxed Apart from tree branches everywhere it is a nice speeded like you can keep the flow very very well and the corners aren't as tight the straights aren't as straight but overall your consistent speed stays about the same which is really nice quite a few downs and ups in it and as we finish up it feels like the the end of the race is very close but we're still like quite a ways away it gets more rolling up down up down up down but not as you know straight down to the valley straight back up we're definitely in the rolling hills section here as you can see a little tighter in the bushes but they're all bushes as opposed to trees so you can kind of let them hit you let them brush through you yeah a little bit tighter I do remember I did actually do two laps. It was on the second lap. I was just like, you know what? I got 30 more minutes of riding in me, or I can just be done because I don't want to. So that's what I chose. Always a tricky decision. That's actually the first race I think I've dropped out of. I was just so hot. Like an hour solid of riding at that point, or it would have been like 58 minutes. I was just like, I don't want to do another lap. And I could have finished my lap, I remember now, I could have finished it, I was like at the end of the second lap, and then I just pulled off and I forgot to go through the finish line, so that whole second lap didn't count, even though I did the whole second lap. Pretty stupid of me, really, but there's no points to it, which meant that didn't make any difference, so who cares? I'd really like to try something like the corduroy this year. I know, like, Zack Attack or something like that. Z-A-1? Zack Attack 1? I don't know what his name is on YouTube. He did the Corduroy this year out in Ontario. And that looks like a fun race. I'd like to push myself on the distances. Ooh, kind of cut that guy off a little bit. But I'm in the fast loop, so get out of my way. Um, the Corduroy is like a multi-day event. There's more of a rally feel to it. I'd love to get some bigger races. All being said, while I dropped out of this race, but you can see it's getting bumpy, everyone's fading. That's like a little merge on and merge off for the intermediate or beginner groups. I mean, not intermediate, I'm not pro, but and there they are again. I don't even know why they make that loop. Maybe it goes much further than I thought, but here we go. Another one of those top sections, which is kind of rougher than it looks. Especially when you come towards the end of them, they always have a lot of choppiness to the terrain. But a quarter run. I'd love to try it. It's normally in September. Probably won't happen this year, but you never know. Um, Multi-day event. Two long races. I mean, even like Dakar, like it'd be cool to do it. Or like a hard indoor event. They're out in Calgary. You could do the beginning stage in town and then do the longer distance races. It would be more interesting than just doing a lap based event if we could find a, an even bigger distance one or timed rally. If anyone knows of any which I should hit up, uh, let me know. I don't know if anyone new is watching or if this is all my old crew of subscribers enjoying some different material. Either way, appreciate you all being here. I feel like you can tell in my riding it looks a little slow pace like I feel like I'm holding back I'm not pushing as hard and at this point I'm only on lap one so I'm going okay I got two more laps of this there is no way I'm gonna do it I think Adam ended up getting four in or he was maybe right behind me when I bailed out and he did like a full another 40 minute lap like two fast beginning laps and then that fourth or third lap he was like burnt out 
But I mean, it was like 38 degrees without any humidity today. And the shade offers no shade, there's no wind. This has to be one of the hottest days riding. And especially racing, there's a difference between like going for a ride with your friends, you can stop and cool off. When you're racing, you just push a little bit harder. You definitely don't stop. Like, I wouldn't stop for an hour non stop for no other reason. I'd stop and be like, damn, it's hot out today, you know? This kind of looks like the guy I passed on the flats there. Uh, I don't know if it is, but it kind of looks like it. Let me buy, so that's good. This section, double wide track downhill. Fun, a little sketchy, then you dive back up and we start climbing back up. So you do a very quick down and then we do some steep climbs up. There we go, no branch, don't want to hit my head on that, been there before. Okay, you can tell once that double track comes, I know the end is near, so I start pushing again. Slow down a little bit, conserve my energy, and now we're pushing, 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 because I remember finishes that. It's funny how the keywords, key moments, you remember things, you have to, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. It'd be nice to pre-run all this stuff, but I don't know if I pre-ran it the day before, if I'd have any energy to do it the next day, or any interest in the same key, anyway. At least you could have planned for it better, added more water breaks. I don't even recall if I took a water bag on this one, which is probably a mistake. Otherwise, I probably would have stopped for a drink. I haven't yet. So I feel like I made the mistake and I didn't even bring a hydration pack. Normally, the downside to the hydration pack is it does like heat up your back a lot. You lose a lot of heat out of your back. So when you put a backpack on, especially a black one, you just cut, you sweat 10 times more. This is kind of, kind of jump into the trees. You sweat so much more with a hydration pack on so I think I decided because it was so hot I wouldn't take one and I'm down. that I don't even know what happened there it's like soft leaves went for the corner and just dropped it and what's funny is I actually crashed at that exact same spot on the second lap and that's where I believe I decided I think I'm gonna end my race the second time round that all just came back to me because this is the big climb out Last year, I nearly jumped out and crashed into this tree right here. I cleared all the way to it, and this year I took a little saw. But on the second lap this year, I crashed at that exact same spot. It was so hot, so sweaty. I was like, I think, I think I'm done. I don't feel like climbing that hill. And you climb out of that hill, and instead of coming up this hill and to the finish, I simply just took the road up and was like, oh, what a good race. I'm tired. And now I uh, think about it. That was the silliest thing to do because it was probably the equal distance of the double track and the only thing I skipped was that big steep hill. Instead I rode double track back to this. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you out there. Good luck.